uh, I will, I'm going to declare a quorum. These, uh, for the city of Groton, I'll call, uh, excuse me. I'm going to call the meeting in order, city of Groton committee of the whole for Monday, September 25th, 2017. Kirk Patrick, please call the roll. Present are Mayor Keith Hedrick, Deputy Mayor Lawrence Garish, Councilors Joe Rusk, Stephen Sheffield, Rashad Carter, Finance Director Ron Newhouse, Clerk Deborah Patrick, excused are Councilors Jamal Beckford and Conrad Heed. Okay, thank you. The first report or referral we have is appointments. I will need a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel for the police department to include uh, uh, Chief Spellman and Daniel Hammett and after that, Jean-Philippe Precourt. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to go into executive session. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We are going to C8 to go into executive session. Out of the executive session, I will need a motion to move uh, both candidates to the council meeting of October 2nd. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, the next item is 645 group referrals, noise abatement, and then the use of city resources. Let me get to noise abatement 645. I read it. It's okay. It's a good one. Well, you know what? Let's do city resources first. Is that the, oh no, that's not the one you did. I uh, no, the one that I did was um Adopt that was the adopter road. Right. Okay, that's later. Okay, never mind. What? City resources is the um, is the resolution R thirteen ten ninety seven. Right. But suddenly, I don't remember. You don't remember where it came from? Nope, I don't remember why. Go ahead. Okay, did you put it in? So, so please, I'll let you discuss that. Uh, we we had a discussion um, during the summer when groups wanted to use certain resources that we have here in okay. the uh, in the um, building. Yep, now I remember. Now, do you remember? Okay. I do. Then I'll let you. Okay, this it. this stems from. Uh, we're going to refer this to a committee because we have had. Uh, as Clark Patrick said, sometimes we have uh, volunteer groups, nonprofit groups, come in and want to want to borrow our resources, such as chairs, tables, uh, PA system. Let's see what else? Tents, those kinds of things. And although we have this resolution, we think that. This should go to a committee and to take a look at it because sometimes people are coming in and they're asking us for them, but they expect us to get it there. Sometimes they'll come and get it. Sometimes we don't know what condition we're going to get it back in. So we, we, we think we should tighten up uh, this ordinance or resolution rather, not ordinance, this resolution. So this should probably go to community development. Okay, so we'll refer that to you. The next one is a uh, a letter that came in from a citizen taxpayer that was concerned about noise, and you can see the. I don't know, did you guys get a copy of this? Okay. So you can see the examples that they gave. They address it to both the town and the city. I'm not sure what the town's doing about it, but I think we should refer this to, let's see, you should probably go to public safety, which is you, right? To take a look at this to see if we have things covered. 
I think some of the, some of the complaints that are in here are covered under uh, our noise. Well, I don't know if we have a noise ordinance, but I know we have a, an ordinance that we've talked about noise in the past mm -hmm. before. One of the challenges with the noise noise ordinance, and this this may be why the town is not taking it on, is it's unless you're there, the police are there when the noise occurs, then it's hard to in order to enforce mm -hmm. it, right? People can call them by the time the police get there, the source of the noise is gone. So mm -hmm. this is, uh, but we'll refer to your, to your committee and, and see if we can do anything with it. I don't know that we can or that we can't, but, but let's take a look at it. I also received, now I'm not going to refer this to anybody, but because, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but this came in to me today although it has September 13th on it, but it says, Dear Mayor Hedrick, this letter is regarding a safety issue on the corner of West Eldrickon and Benham Avenues. The fence surrounding the property located at 115 Benham Avenue in Groton along with the shrubbery along the fence line is causing a blind spot upon exiting West Eldrickon Avenue. With the speeding traffic on Benham Avenue along with the bicycle and pedestrian traffic leaving the Benham Hotel, one cannot clearly see the oncoming traffic on the left-hand side when exiting West Elderkin Avenue. We would greatly appreciate it if your office would send down the appropriate department to review the above issue as a letter has been sent to the zoning department with no results. So we've, we had uh, Carlton Smith, our local uh, enforcement, look at it. It is, it's not an issue, it's not a zoning issue. We've also had the police look at it, and it's, and in their opinion, it's not a public safety issue. So it doesn't end up causing, in their opinion, doesn't cause the uh, the blind spot that's being alluded to here. And as a result of both of those, then I'm not going to refer it to any committee. If you are the one that wrote this letter, if you can provide additional information that we can use, then I will, uh, take that opportunity to get it to the appropriate committee, subcommittee, or committee rather, so that we can review it. But right now, we will take no action on this letter. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is 649, review of Adopt a Road program. a look at this and this is what these are the changes that uh, Heidi made to this mm -hmm. yeah, did, I, you, did I, you get a chance to look at it? <coughs> I did I went through the whole thing I didn't see anything that needed to be corrected okay um, it looked good. Um, okay. I mean, it was basically just copying the town one, yep. which was written by a lawyer. So, and, and then the pen and inks that you recommended, I think mm -hmm. we included all of them. Correct. Okay. Yeah, everything was updated. Okay. And we had, yeah, we had just decided that it was referred to us to uh, create an ordinance, but a policy was probably better suited to this situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Rusk. I noted in the back there was a DCF check and a. Um, a criminal history background check um, is that just for the supervisor is that for any volunteer how is that I, I wasn't finding the information and it's not on the adaptive highway flyer um, which people which, might want to which part are you looking mm -hmm. where, where are you looking to see in the very back two pages of this packet okay is it oh, DCF? Mail to DCF Caroline background services DCF check or DCF background search and a criminal history conviction information request. Okay. Um, so my question is, who needs to fill those out? Is it everybody? Um, and if so, that just needs to be clarified a little bit better. Um, okay. Who that needs to who needs to complete that? All right. I don't. 
I, do, you, do you know the answer? I don't know the answer off the top of my head. My assumption when I read through it the first time was that it was for everybody, which okay. sounds a little excessive, but that would fit with what, uh, when I spoke to the town manager about this policy in the town, he also thought that it was maybe a little overdone, mm -hmm. but that's because the, the, lawyer, the legal recommendation was to protect the town against um, liability. Okay. So I could, I could certainly find out. Thank you. how they do it and you know suggest from mm -hmm. there i just i no yeah. do you something. don't want overreach want mm -hmm. or right okay you want to take a look at that do i you will want certainly to? do that okay thank you all right is there anything else on that and then once we have that answer then we can talk about how to implement this as a policy thank you okay Next is City TIF Districts and Contract, number 650. Okay. Uh, Barbara, if I could get you to come up here to help me out. Are, have we, are you, well, let me start this way. Uh, we've talked a lot about TIF, uh, Tax Incremental Financing Districts, for a while, but I don't know if we've given you presentations as a council. Are you guys aware of tax incremental financing? I know, sorry, yes. thank you. Stephen, you have, or excuse me, Councilor Sheffield, you attended uh, yeah. a presentation at the CCM conference uh, a couple with, years ago, yeah. several uh, years ago, rather. Along with the uh, Council of Governments, also. Okay. So I've had two. Okay, so you're familiar with it? Yeah. We actually attended oh, that you guys together. Attended yeah. together so you guys are familiar. Yeah. I would love a review. Okay. <laughs> I just handed you a cheat sheet that kind of highlights uh, two pages <clears throat> that may highlight some of your questions. Um, this is a possible economic development financing tool that. Um, in 2015, the state of Connecticut changed its TIF regulations to implement TIF district uh, tax increment financing districts rather than kind of sole source tax increment financing, which had been done in the past. That process was extremely onerous, and in fact, Connecticut utilized TIF almost hardly at all because it was so difficult to implement in the state of Connecticut. They changed it to be rather than Tax increment financing is based on a development, and historically it's been um, John Smith comes in with a mall development in Manchester, one developer, um, one parcel, one project. And the tax assessor goes out and says, okay, they pay $100 a year in taxes. After this is developed on this land, they're gonna pay them $200 in taxes. That differential, the increment there between $100 and $200 can then be set aside and not put into the general fund, but actually isolated and utilized for um, the district for economic development. It could be for financing, it could be for infrastructure. For example, uh, in Manchester's case, I believe they did use tax increment financing and it paid for water and sewer to the site so that they could build out the, is it what, what's farms? Whatever that huge mall complex mm -hmm. is there. Um, so this is, that's what this tool is. The town of Broughton has brought in Kamoyne Associates, a consultant, to look at tax increment financing um, as a potential, uh, to, to be used by the town in two potential sources. And in the conversation, Kamoyne brought up the fact of how logical the Thames Street District, now this is, there, there's, the state of Connecticut changed the law so that it can be in a district. So it's not specific to a project or one parcel, but multiple projects within a geographic district. And they thought Thames Street screamed tax increment financing district, which it does. And um, that led to discussions, and now it led to the fact that um, the city sees the value in this as a tool. Um, and would like to ex explore with Kamoyne 
the possibility, and with the town, the possibility of including the Thames Street and the Five Corners, our two kind of commercial districts, as one district in um, in their overall overarching analysis of TIF um, for Groton. And um, so that's why we're here. We think it's a really good idea. However, it is going to cost the city additional money for the extra work entailed in putting together a financing plan and master plan, which is required by state law as part of this process in an ordinance and public hearings and, and so and so on and so forth. And Kamoin would offer us those same services that they're doing, um, that they are doing for the town. Councilor uh, Barbara, uh, of course, we've, like I said, we've attended those meetings and I uh, was very um, interested in, in a type of program for Thames Street, something like that. And of course, properties that are sitting there. Uh, right. And of course, uh, Mayor Hedrick mentioned uh, the recent property that the state of Connecticut owns that they're looking to sell. That would be a potential opportunity for a developer to come mm -hmm. in and uh, you know take properties like that that are just sitting there um, i even thought about even the mother bailey house potentially if that was something to join in with something like that um, so hopefully that's sort of the idea to really bring everything to that area along with the five corners uh, i think it's a great idea and i think it's something uh, we should certainly explore so it's certainly not the be-all and the end-all. It, it takes developers and property owners interested in also seeing their properties be put to the highest and best use. But it is a, an extremely um, flexible tool that I think that we need in our arsenal because it really will help bring people to the table, both someone who is interested in putting massive amounts of properties together and, and creating one development, or as you suggested, Cherry picking some of those that are available and starting, starting there. Um, again, you don't have to put all of that increment away for use of the districts. You can um, take up to 100% of that increment. So if the differential is $100 more that you're going to make, you can only take 50 of that and put it towards the district. The rest goes into the general fund. So you still have the ability and the, and the city would have that ability to work with the assessor and the, and the uh, taxation department at the town to figure out what makes the most sense from a financial standpoint. So you, you don't look at it necessarily, necessarily as losing general fund dollars, but just putting those, some of those general fund dollars to their highest and best use to in, begin to encourage sustainable economic development in, in the areas that, where you want it. Um, have we been in, has any potential developer approached us um, as far as any ideas as of yet? Anybody has, has any? No, uh, we've had some tire kickers with the 18 Thames, the, the former training facility. Um, the one part of the, of the owners of the Spicer properties. It, it, there are two sides of the road and literally there are two sets of the family that own that control each side. But I do know that they're, they have some issues with their property on Bridge Street. And they have been in and called me about some ideas and what financial incentives we might have available. And right now we really have very little, nothing. Um, that's particularly available, except the city's a great place to do business. But other than that, um, they were looking at things with more dollar signs attached <laughs> to them. Now, does our state representatives, are they also, um, can they also be involved as far as, um, you know, with the state or anything like that? As far they as were initially to make this happen, but now one of the nice things about this is once it did happen, it becomes under the city and the town's purview, the local municipality who adopts it is now under their control, which makes a lot more sense since we know what we need and how much we need and what these specific districts bring to the table. And it's out of the state's hands, which is another reason why this may work better than the original TIF legislation that has been in place for at least two decades. Yes, right. Just a devil's advocate kind of a question. Um, if the town is already going to do a TIF, 
and our mill rate is much smaller than the town's. Um, what's the, is there um, like a measurable value for us to do it as well or? Their TIF will be geographically prescribed mm -hmm. to the corner of, I believe, <coughs> this is their preliminary idea of 117 and 184 and then the industrial park area. Those are the two distinct areas they're looking at developing TIFs. We would not be able to do that on our own. It, and we could not piggyback onto that because our districts, our whole city is outside of those two districts. So we'd have to specify the districts we want to focus in on. And to do that, you have to develop a master plan specific to each, including even the property identification codes for each and every parcel that are included. And the analysis would have to be done by the town's um, assessor as to what the value is at this moment in time. You also have to be very careful because you're limited to 10% of your um, property value within your community that can be in a TIF. Now, we, clearly we have none, so that we're okay, but they would want to be very careful to make sure we don't consume too much of our properties that are, um, and that it falls above that benchmark of 10%. Mm -hmm. But no, we couldn't piggyback on to them. We, the, what we could do is say thanks, but no thanks, we're not ready to do this now. And then if and when we ever wanted to do a TIF, we'd have to start from the beginning and go through the process. The one nice thing about this is it will save us money in the long run because we are able to capture Kamoyne, who is, has produced most of the work in the state of Connecticut on TIF districts. Um, we can piggyback on to what they've done already, which is all the demographics for the Groton and all the specific information they have to have in order to make this proceed. So, Councilor, uh, excuse me, Deputy Mayor so, uh, Gersh. So we would, we would be independent with this of the town? Yes. Okay, but well, we would just use we would need the, the services of... And the assessor, on the, right. we share right. that particular service. So there would be some places where we work together, but Typically, TIFs are done, there's a committee that forms, and I think we'd want committees specific to the Thames Street and Five Corners district would be quite different than the 184, 117, which is really probably only gonna have a single developer. So that is going to be a very different animal than what ours is gonna be. And this, the TIF district legislation allows us to be what we are and not compete with the 184, 117 right. kind of developer. So they would have their own committee, and we would have another one to determine what our highest and best use for those plans are, and, for that money is. Secondly, I was wondering, do we have any idea what the costs would be? I, I'm, I'm going to get to that when, yes. we're, when, oh, okay. we're, All right. when we're done with the other technical questions. I was going to okay. shift the cost. Councilor Heath? Oh, I guess. Thank you. I just wanted to... Um, okay. I just wanted to help you make the point that this is in addition to what the town is doing. Um, so it really is a value add for the city because otherwise we would get no direct benefit in the city from a TIF. Correct. Mm. Okay, so the cost of this. Initially, when we started, we had talked about doing Fame Street and in your packet, you'll see that there's uh, basically a uh, proposal for the city of Groton <coughs> TIF master plan and you'll see that they do this for a fee of $10,000. We have <clears throat> since been approached verbally by the town manager to add five corners. And if we add five corners, there's some efficiency gained and the total cost for Thames Street and for five corners would be $15,000. That's what we would need to pay for this. So then the question becomes, um, where do we get the $15,000? So I talked to the finance director and asked him to take a look at it. And Ron, would you elaborate where we, where we have money? There's really two places that we could use for this. Um, the first one I wouldn't recommend, which is the contingency in the general fund, which we have the 115,000 that we budgeted for. We are still early in the year. And as we found out last year, we never know what things may come about. Um, the other piece of it is the Economic Development Beautification Fund that the 50 and 5 generator rent goes into, which was set, set up for purposes like this, economic development and beautification within the city. 
There's currently 180,000 of undesignated funds in that fund. Temporarily right now, there's an earmarked of a $16,000 transfer, which will come back to you um, in April of 17, April 10th, 2017, during budget presentations, Barbara presented the Economic Development Commission budget. That budget's funded by this fund as well, so we need to do a transfer to get their budget funded, but we'll deal with that after. So right now there's about $172,000 in that fund that we could use for this project. Councilor Rusk. Robert, do you have any sort of hesitation on this? No, I think it's an excellent tool. Okay. That's it's too bad to. it's not free. Yeah. That the town <laughs> that would make it even better. Their, <laughs> you know, the beauty of their hearts and minds that they don't want to give this to us. Well, we had originally thought that we were clear from the beginning that we wanted Main Street in this, and somewhere there was some communication that was either either not clear or was not communicated well or was misunderstood. And so the next thing, when, when we went down to Blueback Square to talk about development, that's when I found out that it was going to cost me another $10,000. Thames Street and that's when I contacted the town manager and said hey what are we doing here and so we've been communicating back and forth uh, Camoyne sent the, their uh, proposal for uh, their proposal and then uh, and then John and I talked again the town manager and I talked again, again. and so for $15,000 we can get TIF set up the TIF master plans set up for both Thames Street and Five Corners and I think this is a good thing. We are looking at economic development here in the city. Also, this goes hand in hand with the next 10 years. Uh, if you remember the next 10 years, Electric Boat is looking to expand uh, by 15,000 people. Some of those are for attrition and some of those are going to Quonset Point, but 10,000 of those for sure are gonna be coming to Electric Boat. So. One of the things that I'm doing is I'm talking to some of the young entrepreneurs that we have, not young and not so young, but entrepreneurs that we have here in the city to talk about continued investing in the city and what would they like to do to help meet the expectations for the next five and 10 years. And this will be a tool that will help us and hopefully we will find the right developers for Thames Street. There's a vision out there. We need some other people with vision. The one thing that we lack now is venture capitalists or other entrepreneurs that want to get together and develop Fame Street. So I think this will help us. And the TIF does allow us to do credit and enhancement um, funding, which is a really big, that could be a real, really big boon to somebody who wants to package together several parcels and developments to put together. So if you are in agreement with uh, Providing the fifteen thousand dollars, then I will need a motion to move this to the meeting of two October two thousand seventeen. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Abstentions. Motion carries. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Thank you Barbara. The next That's is six fifty one purchase of a two thousand eighteen seventy four hundred construction dump truck. And would you like to come up and provide some info? I think we, if I remember correctly, we talked about this during budget season, that we were going to budget for this. This truck, um, it is a dump truck, but its main purpose, uh, it will have a hydraulic crane on the back. Um, it will replace our 90, 1999 um, backhaul, which we use for sweeping streets, and it's got the giant hose on the back for sucking out the, vac the uh, basins. Um, it's performed well for the, over the years, but it is a very noisy truck. I'm sure you've all heard that. You know, like I go looking for it, I just shut my, roll my window down and listen. I know it's actually going on. <laughs> but um, the biggest. Um, advantage of this truck, it's a one person to operate it instead of two. You work off the side, not the back, 
so you're not so worried about traffic. You're always working off the passenger side, and it's a one-man operation. It's uh, a little crane, like you see the little kids that used to pick up the toys and the, the little teddy bears and stuff in the store, and that's how it works. It's just mm -hmm. very simple. Yeah, as it's picking up the material, the water drains, so we don't have to vacuum all the water, we come over here and dump it and lose it in the street. Um, I think it'll be a big improvement in speed and manpower. Do you want to talk about bids or anything like that? Do we need to? This, um, this came off the state, the state bid list. Okay. So we're familiar with that. Everybody's familiar with that, I think. Correct. Any questions or comments for Tim or Ron? Where's the other one go? Or we keep the other one? Yeah, well, we can't get much for it, no. but we'll still use it for vacuum. The street part of it okay. we'll use until it's worn out. Okay, any other questions? Okay, with that, I'll take a motion to move this to the uh, mayor and council meeting until October. Okay, I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. The last thing we have on our list is the is a request from Children First Rotten for a thousand dollars. I don't know if you are familiar with Children First Rotten, but they support several programs and initiatives associated with children of all ages. And I think we have provided funds to them before. I want to say in the last in the last few years we've done it, but there was one the beginning of this year. I believe it was may have been in April or okay. thereabouts. The timing I could be wrong. The way that the resolution is written, it is a thousand per fiscal year. So okay. there, nothing's been done in this fiscal year. So this would be the only. Uh, request this would be the only request for them for this fiscal year. It would be a thousand dollars for them and no more. And Ron, what where would that where would we what do we have available? That the resolution had um, you can it's up to five thousand dollars in total donations, which comes out of the community development and beautification fund. And it, I believe the way that it was written was up to twenty percent can go to one to the nonprofit or request in each fiscal year. So that would be the $1,000. So if we went with $1,000, that would be the 20%. Yeah. We have not used any of that, any funds from that account for this fiscal year. Remember, we just started the fiscal year in July, so we're really not that far into it. Uh, also, we do not have, the request is for $1,000. Mm -hmm. You do not have to uh, authorize $1,000. You can authorize less than a thousand dollars whatever the council or not whatever the council uh, deems appropriate i would move that we donate a thousand move it to the october 2nd agenda i'll second okay we have a motion and a second any discussion just quick question Pastor what Pete? what will they use the the donation for I think it lists a whole uh, bunch of them on the back. No question, man. Hold on. So, uh, reading, um, childhood professionals, field trips, basically. Well, they they have well they have lots of different programs. Surprise, yeah, it I looks like there's a lot. I mean, a thousand dollars doesn't cover all that. <laughs> No. Yeah. May I? Well, hold on, Councilor. Well, I was going to answer his question. Oh, okay, please. If you flip the page over, it says in the past year, Ch Children First Groton has served 500 children with free books and summer reading programs, 3,000 children through prescription to read programs in their pediatrician's office, supporting the farmer's market in Groton, recognizing 60 children through Groton Rocks for Kindness and anti-bullying, serving 80 people through nutrition and cooking matter programs. And it goes on and on. Um, specifically in the city, it says um, we serve 200 military families through neighborhood programs, 30 people through the city of Groton neighborhood, 75 people through Grant, sorry, 75 people through Branford Manor neighborhood. Um, goes on. 
talks about um, purchasing car seats and bike helmets for the city police department to give away, paid the overtime for two city police officers to fit free bike helmets at Groton City Day, purchased child fingerprinting ID kits, um, supplied free food coupons for Eastern Point Beach Snack Shack to be given away by city police when they catch kids doing things right by riding with their bike helmets. Goes on and on. So I think it does definitely so, help the city. Well, as you can see, because they've talked about Brantford Men or other places in the city, mm -hmm. clearly they support the city of and And it would be appropriate to uh, fund their request. So any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I think that's it. Let me get to that. And uh, the executive session is over. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I know we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We're adjourned.